Hey everybody, it is my last day here on the Antietam battlefield and I'm standing next to another mortuary cannon. I showed you one of those the other day and I want to give you a little bit of a story behind this one. Now, Joseph Mansfield was the only Corps commander on either side and one of only a handful of Corps commanders during the entire American Civil War to be killed in action. Mansfield had only been given command of the Union 12th Corps two days before the Battle of Antietam. It was his first field command as a general. He had served in the Mexican War, but he was at the time a much lower rank. And so he took command of the 12th Corps and he was leading them into action uh, on the morning of September 17th. They were the second Corps uh, to go into action. The Union attack basically moved from right to left. So you had Hooker's 1st Corps attacked first, followed by the 12th Corps of Mansfield. And Mansfield had come up to the front to encourage his men to move the attack on in. And then he had gone back to get some reinforcements before coming once again to the front in order to uh, oversee the deployment of the troops. When he got back to this point, he saw the men of the 10th Maine firing into these woods. And he was sure that it was Hooker's men who were in those woods. And so he started riding up and down the line, shouting to the men of the 10th Maine, no, you're firing into your own men. Stop, stop. But the men of the 10th Maine, uh, they protested and they said, no, we've been here. We know who we're firing at. It's definitely the enemy. Mansfield then looked and, and said, okay, yes, you're right. And just as he said those words, a bullet slammed into his horse and then a bullet slammed into his chest. He actually was able to ride his horse a little bit north on the Smoketown Road to try and get away from the men of the 10th Maine uh, so that they didn't see him co go down. Uh, but eventually he just was not able to stay up and there were men from another regiment who uh, helped him down from his horse. They called for a surgeon, but it was clear that he was mortally wounded. He was taken to a field hospital where he died the next day. He was posthumously promoted to the rank of Major General and that promotion was backdated to July of 1862. And it was specifically mentioned that that promotion was because of his uh, gallantry here on the morning of September 17th. 